Have there been moments in your life where you've received wisdom or valuable advice but ignored or failed to understand its importance? Or do you know someone who maybe initially was enthusiastic about a new idea but then gave up on it when difficulties arose? Well, tonight's bedtime story is based on the parable of the sower from Matthew chapter 13. The story is a timeless parable from the ancient scriptures that holds profound wisdom about the nature of growth and personal transformation. The story's moral is that the Word of God can only bear fruit in your life when you receive it with understanding and commitment. I will read this story as a modern adaptation that brings to life the wisdom of this age-old story in a new and relatable way. Woven with kindness, wisdom, and positivity, tonight's bedtime story will be a journey of growth, transformation, and becoming the seeds and the soil for you. So join me in this journey and let the wisdom of the sower's tale take root in your heart and bloom in your life. I'm Drew, and this is Encounter. Matthew was not just an ordinary man in the vibrant, buzzing city. He had an air of mystery with a twinkle in his wise blue eyes that seemed to carry the wisdom of centuries. Matthew prepared to share another of his mesmerizing narratives as the sun began to set, casting a warm golden glow over the city. But on this particular day, he found himself in the heart of a bustling urban park, a refreshing oasis amidst the concrete jungle. At the park's epicenter stood an ancient, towering tree which bore witness to the countless stories and experience over the years. Here, under its wide, comforting branches, Matthew would gather an audience drawn from every walk of city life. Busy tycoons, keen students, diligent workers, excited children, and elders seeking solace from their solitude would assemble, eagerly anticipating Matthew's narrative spectacle. As twilight began to fall, people would begin to gather. The hard concrete softened under the touch of warm, diffused light, and the laughter of children playing nearby echoed through the park. A sense of expectation filled the air. <clears throat> Matthew cleared his throat and captured their attention, and he began. Today, I will tell you a story, an age-old parable, that is relevant in our lives even today. It's known as the parable of the sower. He continued, this story revolves around a farmer who sets out to sow his seeds. He carries his bag filled to the brim as he walks along the fields. He begins scattering the seeds with a swing of his arm. As Matthew spoke, he mimicked the farmer's actions, a wide swing of his arm, painting the image for his captivated audience. But, Matthew paused, looking at the eager faces, the seeds do not all meet the same fate. Some fall on the path, some onto rocky ground, some among the thorns, and some on the good soil. Each seed's journey and the outcome depend greatly on where it lands. His words swirled around the audience as he spoke, 
a dance of syllables and meanings woven with a skill only a seasoned storyteller could muster. Everyone listened, rapt, their minds painting images of seeds dancing in the wind, settling down on different terrain, each holding a promise of life within. Over the next few days, Matthew continued, his voice carrying the soft undercurrent of a promise, we will delve into what happens to these seeds. We will explore their journeys and discover how the nature of the soil on which they fall influences their fate. Through this, we may also discover the conditions of our own hearts and the state of our receptivity to the seeds of wisdom and knowledge. Matthew ended the session with a knowing smile, leaving a sense of anticipation in the cool evening air. As the crowd dispersed, the sower's echoes and seeds remained, leaving each listener to ponder over the opening chapter of this timeless parable, waiting eagerly for the rest to unfold. The following evening, as the sun started to dip below the skyline, a crowd formed under the ancient tree again. There was a sense of eager anticipation and shared curiosity that seemed to mingle with the sweet, cooling evening breeze. They had been captivated by Matthew's tale from the previous night, and they were hungry for more. With a knowing smile, Matthew took his place before the assembly. The crowd quieted down, and he began to weave his narrative again, his voice resonating with age-old wisdom. We start again where we left off, with the farmer and his seeds. You see, the seeds are like the word, and the places they fall are the conditions of our hearts. His eyes scanned the crowd as he continued. Let us consider the seeds that fall on the path. Imagine the path as a busy city sidewalk, a hardened surface compacted by the footfall of countless pedestrians. The seeds on the path are like the words of wisdom that come to us, but we do not understand. They fall on our ears but do not penetrate our hearts. Matthew paced in front of the crowd, his voice deep and measured. These seeds lie there, exposed, not taking root. And then comes the evil one, like the birds of the sky, swooping down to pick away the seeds from the path. This, my friends, represents the moments when the message is lost to us, snatched away before we can let it sink in. Much like when one is too engrossed in the noise of city life to appreciate the beauty of a sunset. A murmur of understanding rippled through the crowd. Matthew's analogy, their city life compared to the hardened path, struck a chord. It was a poignant reminder of their own daily distractions that prevented deeper understanding and contemplation. Now, let us consider the seeds falling on rocky grounds. Matthew continued, holding a small stone for emphasis. These seeds quickly sprout because there's not much soil. It's shallow. They symbolize those who hear the word and receive it with joy, but the joy doesn't run deep. When trouble comes, or the word challenges them, they quickly disappear, just as plants with shallow roots wither under the harsh sun. He paused, letting his words sink in, echoing in the silent dusk. 
the crowd listened, each processing the story, looking inward, recognizing their faith's shallowness, momentary joy, and fragility when trials struck. As we progress, we will delve into the other types of soil and their implications. Matthew concluded his voice imbued with a solemn promise. For now, ponder upon the path in the rocky ground. Reflect upon their implications in your life. Are you on the path or the rocky ground? Or are you ready to cultivate the good soil? As the assembly broke for the night, Matthew's parable continued to echo in their minds, stirring deep introspection. They look forward to the next meeting under the ancient tree where seeds of wisdom would be sown again. As the third evening approached, the crowd beneath the ancient tree buzzed with anticipation. Their conversations were filled with reflections on the path and the rocky ground, ruminations inspired by the parables shared by Matthew. As the storyteller took his place, a hush fell over the assembly. We have spoken about the seeds that fell on the path and on rocky ground, began Matthew his voice carrying the soft lilt of a seasoned storyteller. Today, we delve into the lives of those represented by the seeds that fell on the path. He paused, surveying the crowd before him, their faces reflecting a kaleidoscope of life experiences. Life on the path is similar to life in a fast-paced city Matthew continued, Our lives, much like the path, are often hardened by the footfall of routines, daily pressures. We hear wisdom and we receive it, but it doesn't find fertile soil within us. It lies on the surface, vulnerable, unable to take root. Matthew painted a vivid picture with his words. Imagine walking down a bustling city sidewalk, earphones plugged in, music playing, a constant stream of messages buzzing on your phone. All around you, life moves in a rapid blur. Amidst this chaos, you might notice a beautiful melody in the song you're listening to, or a profound quote on a storefront you pass by. But you're moving too fast, too distracted. Like the seeds, the melody, the quote, cannot take root. And soon enough, they're forgotten, lost in the noise of city life. A ripple of understanding ran through the crowd. It was a situation all too familiar to them. The wisdom lost amidst life's distractions, the beauty missed in the hurry pace. Matthew's voice was sober. When we don't take time to understand, to listen truly, we're like the hard path. Like the seed, the wisdom is left exposed, easy pickings for the birds, the distractions of life that snatch it away before it can take root. He encouraged the crowd. This is not an admonition, but a gentle reminder for introspection. How often do we allow ourselves to pause, slow down, reflect, and allow the seed of wisdom to seep into the depth of our hearts? His words echoed in the hush of the twilight leaving each listener deep in thought. The parable of the seed on the path had taken on a whole new meaning for them. It was no longer just a farmer's tale, but a profound narrative 
reflecting their experiences. As the crowd began to disperse, the echoes of Matthew's words lingered in the air. Life on the path, they mused, the thought imbued with newfound understanding and perspective. With eager hearts, they looked forward to the following day, ready to explore the remaining terrains upon which the seeds fell. As the day dwindled into another enchanting evening, the crowd reconvened under the comforting spread of the ancient tree. Matthew, the teller of tales and bearer of wisdom, stood ready to resume his narrative. The echoes of previous parables still resonated within their hearts, rendering them eager for the forthcoming wisdom. Yesterday, Matthew began, his eyes scanning the attentive faces. We walked the path. Today, we tread upon the rocky ground. Picture a patch of earth interspersed with rocks, a tough terrain that allows seeds to settle, but not to thrive. He picked up a small rock from the ground, holding it for the crowd to see. In our modern setting, the rocky ground could represent those of us who receive wisdom with initial enthusiasm but lack the depth of understanding or commitment to withstand the challenges. We allow it to sprout but fail to nourish it sufficiently. Matthew paused, his gaze distant. Picture this. You stumble upon a motivational book. You're excited. You read it with fervor. And you feel invincible for a few days. But then life throws a curveball, a challenge, a disruption. The motivation wanes. The book's teachings are forgotten. And you're back to your old ways. This, dear friends, represents the seed on the rocky ground. His words, once more, sent a murmur through the crowd. They could see reflections on their own experiences, short-lived resolutions, and failed attempts at change. It was as though Matthew held up a mirror to their lives, and the reflections were glaringly accurate. The rocky ground, just like us in these instances, does not allow the seed of wisdom to take root. Matthew continued, his tone earnest. It sprouts quickly, but without a strong root system. It cannot survive the scorching trials of life and the harsh sunlight. It withers, and the potential for a flourishing plant is lost. Matthew's analogy hung heavy in the air, a poignant reminder of their failures to commit, their inability to nurture the seed of wisdom to full fruition. But his words had no judgment, only understanding and a subtle nudge towards self-reflection. So, we must ask ourselves, Matthew concluded, his gaze soft yet piercing. Are we the rocky ground? Are we giving the seeds of wisdom a chance to root deeply within us? Or are we allowing life's challenges to wither our sprouting understanding? Once more, the crowd dispersed with these questions echoing in their minds. They saw their lives in a new light, realizing that they, too, were often the rocky ground themselves, offering shallow refuge to the seeds of wisdom. As they left, 
they look forward to the next chapter, eager to understand the fate of the remaining seeds. The following evening, a familiar scene unfolded under the ancient tree. The crowd gathered their minds in a world of thoughts and introspections fueled by Matthew's insightful narratives. As he took his place, they fell silent, their eyes reflecting their eagerness. Good evening, my friends, Matthew greeted, his voice as warm as the setting sun. So far, we have traversed the path, trodden the rocky ground. Today, we venture into the thorny undergrowth. Matthew picked up a dried thorn from beneath the tree, holding it up for everyone to see. Now imagine the thorns as life's distractions and worries. They represent our worldly desires, our chase for wealth, success, recognition, all of which can choke the growth of the seed. The crowd listened intently as Matthew painted a vivid picture with his words. Consider a bustling entrepreneur whose life is entwined with his startup. He hears wisdom and acknowledges it, but his mind is preoccupied with business strategies, growth plans, and profit margins. He's constantly racing against time, grappling with anxieties. The wisdom, like the seed among the thorns, struggles to flourish. It is choked by his worldly worries, the ceaseless pursuit of success. Nods of recognition ripple through the crowd. They could relate to the thorny undergrowth, the choking worries, and the overpowering desire to succeed. Matthew's narrative was like a mirror, reflecting the complexities of their lives. The thorny ground, Matthew continued, is fertile, capable of supporting growth, but the thorns, our worries and distractions, compete with the seed for resources. And over time, they overpower the young plant, the wisdom stunting its growth. He let his words sink in, their resonance echoed in the quiet dusk. Then he asked, How often do we let our lives' thorns choke the wisdom we receive? How often do we allow the seed to be overpowered by our anxieties and desires? The crowd was silent. Each person delving into a sea of introspection, Matthew's words had stirred something within them, revealing truths about their lives that they had been too busy to notice. We must be careful, Matthew concluded, not to let the thorns of life choke the seeds of wisdom. We must learn to manage our worries and desires, making room for wisdom to grow and flourish the crowd dispersed, their minds filled with Matthew's words, their hearts echoing with newfound understanding. They had seen themselves in the path, the rocky ground, and now among the thorns. They looked forward to the next day, eager to discover the fate of the seeds that fell on good soil. When the sun descended on the sixth day, the crowd reunited under the ancient tree once more. 
the lessons from Matthew's parables had sparked profound self-reflection, and they returned eager to hear the final chapter of the tale. Matthew stood before them, his eyes radiating with the promise of closure. Dear friends, Matthew began, his voice comforting. We've journeyed through the path, the rocky ground, the thorny undergrowth. Today, we reach the good soil, the most hospitable ground for the seeds. The crowd listened intently, the anticipation palpable. The good soil, Matthew continued, symbolizes an understanding heart and a receptive mind. It represents those who hear wisdom, understand it, and allow it to take root deep within us. It's like an artist who appreciates the beauty of a sunset and lets it inspire her artwork. Or a teacher who doesn't just impart knowledge, but continually learns and grows. Matthew's words painted vivid images. The understanding artist, the evolving teacher. The seeds that fall on good soil, he explained, are not merely heard, they are absorbed. They can germinate, sprout, and grow into healthy plants that bear fruit. The wisdom is not just received, it's understood internalized and inspires actions a murmur of understanding rippled through the crowd this was the ground they all strived to be the good soil it was a call to open their hearts truly understand and act upon the wisdom they received ah but remember matthew warned his tone serious. Being the good soil is not a one-time achievement. It's a continuous process. We must till our hearts, remove the rocks of superficial understanding, pull out the thorns of worldly worries, and prepare it for the seeds of wisdom. Matthew's message once more struck a chord with his listeners. They saw the value of constant introspection and the importance of keeping their hearts open and receptive. In the end, Matthew concluded, we each have the potential to be the good soil. We have within us the capacity to understand, to learn, to grow, and to bear fruit. The question is, are we willing to prepare our ground? The crowd dispersed, each person carrying a piece of Matthew's wisdom, a seed ready to take root in their hearts. They had journeyed through the parable, had seen themselves in the path, the rocky ground, the thorns, and they now aspired to be the good soil. As the sun set, Matthew stood alone under the ancient tree, his tale told. He hoped that his words, like the seeds in his parable, had found good soil in the hearts of his listeners. He knew his task was done for now, perhaps tomorrow. Another story awaited another parable, another chance to sow seeds of wisdom. <laughs>